today. It's a very special day. I'm sending Jean and Frank to the store for a package. But Jean, you mustn't look to see what's in the package. Promise me? All right, says Jean. I promise, Mother. And away go Frank and Jean down the sunny street. What do you suppose is in the package they are going for? But who is this? Why, it's Frances White. What is Frances carrying in her hand? i whispering to Frances. I see someone else across the street. Why, it's Jean's friends all coming over. Jean's friends. Marjorie, Ellen, Amy, and Ruth. Ellen has a package. And so have the others. What is in the packages? You'll see in just a minute. Here we are in the backyard. All of Jean's good friends. But why is Ellen going to hide? Why is Ruth hiding? And Marjorie and Amy? You'll see in just a minute. And here is the secret. A surprise party for Jean on her sixth birthday. Ruth thinks the birthday table is very pretty. So does Amy. But hide, Amy, because Jean may be back at any moment. And we all want to be ready for her surprise party. But I think I hear Jean coming now. I better go see. Yes, here they come. Frank has a package. Can you guess what is in the package now? Jean, you stay out here and play with your dolly. Frank, would you come into the house with me? Oh, my, there goes Jean. She'll find out the secret. Quick, Frank, catch her. My, that was close. Jean almost saw Francis. That would have spoiled everything. Be quiet, Francis. Jean mustn't know. Not just yet. Hide, Ellen and Marjorie. You can have just one peek to see what Frank is bringing. What is it? Why, it's a birthday cake, of course. A birthday cake for Jean with pink and white icing. And with six candles. And it's almost time for Jean's surprise. Be quiet, Amy, and hide. Stay hidden, Ellen. 
Be very quiet, Marjorie. You too, Fluff. Find a place to hide. For here comes Jean. Here she comes. She has her hands over her eyes. Don't peek, Jean. Not yet. Now. Surprise, Jean. Surprise. Surprise, surprise. Surprise. What a fine birthday surprise for Jean. A cake and presents from her friends. Everyone has brought a present. Everyone has a hat and a place at the table. Oh, Mother, thank you so much, cries Jean. Open your presents, Jean. Let's see them. Here's a doll from Mother and Father. And a skipping rope from Amy. And some pretty handkerchiefs from Ellen. Oh, thank you, says Jean. You're very welcome, smiles Amy. But now blow out your candles, Jean. One, two, three, counts Amy. And four, five, and six. Jean has blown them all out. What a nice surprise birthday party. Everyone is having a good time. But here's the birthday cake. Mmm, mmm, says Francis. Everyone gets a big piece. Everyone thinks the birthday cake looks very pretty. But who is this for? It's for Amy. Goody, 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 says Amy. But she sees something else. Why, it's a tray of ice cream. Ice cream to eat with the cake. And what do you know? A big dish of ice cream for Jean's kitten, Fluff. Well, Fluff like that, says Jean. Boy, oh boy. Here, Fluff, Jean calls. Here, Fluff. Yeah. And here she comes. Yeah. Jean places Fluff's dish of ice cream yeah. on the ground. Will Fluff eat it? Let's see. Yes, indeed. Fluff likes ice cream. And Jean likes her party. Thank you so much for coming, says Jean. And Fluff, how do you like Jean's birthday party? A surprise! It's a party! Yeah, it's Smiley's death anniversary party. He, um, it's a skeleton holiday, apparently. It's, um, I don't know. All I know is, if he don't get his death anniversary party, I'm getting nothing but deathless. So, we're having a big party. We're celebrating this food. Um, is that right? This food, this beer. <laughs> decorations and fun everywhere so we're gonna have a big party today and we're gonna watch Queen of Blood with actual movie stars in it. It's gonna have uh, Dennis Hopper, Dennis Hopper's in it, uh, Basil Rangbone, um, and John Saxon in it, is in it too. So two movie stars and John Saxon. So let's watch that and I'll, I'll get some party supplies and we'll have a party. Surprise!
year 1990. The problem of traveling to the moon has been solved for many years. Space stations have been built there, and authorized personnel come and go as they wish. But the moon is a dead world. And the great question about space still remains. Does life exist on another planet? To seek an answer to this question, the major powers of the world have been actively preparing at the International Institute of Space Technology to explore the planets Venus and Mars. Ready for lunch? Yes. Oh, great, because I'm starved. I just finished a high G session in the centrifuge. How do you feel? Not bad, considering. How's the music of the spheres today? Listen. Hmm? We've been picking up these signals now for three days. Dr. Faraday thinks they're from a planet within our galaxy, but beyond our solar system. What, well, does he think it might be a form of communication? Well, they're different from anything we picked up before. They're working on some tapes that I've made now, trying to see if they can decipher it. Bill, I'm leaving the recorder on automatic. Will you keep an eye on it for me? Right. Must be some... a message of some kind. And just think, if it is, it will be our first contact with intelligent beings from another planet. You certainly were hungry. That's the one bad thing about space trips, no banana splits. No matter what they say about that exobiologic food, it tastes terrible. It's all relative. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Mind sharing your table with a couple of starving astronauts? Hi, Tony. Hi, Paul. Sit down. Have a seat, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Alan was just complaining about the exobiologic food. You'd better get used to it. That's all you're going to get once you're on the way to Mars. It is Mars you're scheduled for, isn't it? Yeah, if and when. What's the latest scuttlebutt there, Tony, baby? I only know what Matahara here tells me. And she gets a stay from the horse's mouth. You mean Dr. Faraday? Well, I do hear a remark now and then. They seem to be making some excellent progress on that new radiation shield. Attention. As a matter of fact... Attention, all personnel. All personnel. Assemble immediately in Area 1 for important announcement. Attention, all personnel. That means us. What am I going to do with this? So you'll Area have codes to do. Go at once to Come Area on. 1 for important announcement. All personnel. You think this means we're flying, Alan? All personnel. Could be there more ready for Mars than we think, huh, Alan? I hope so. Do you think you're getting married or not? <laughs> Commander Brockman, what's happened? No idea. It must be pretty important, though. That's for sure, sir. My friends and fellow workers... In the great adventure of space, I have, I have the most important news to announce since our first successful landing on the moon 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. As many of you know, for several weeks now, we have been receiving organized signals from a far galaxy. This morning, our code experts finally deciphered the message these signals contain. It's a most extraordinary document. It's very long. 
I am not going to read it to you, but uh, I would like you to have the gist of it. It informs us that they are dispatching a spaceship to bring their ambassador to our planet Earth. They believe our atmospheric conditions will support their form of life, which apparently is similar to our own. The timing of their blast off should be just about now. I wanted, I wanted you here at Space, Space Institute to be the, the first, first to know. know. I'm sure the entire world will await the arrival of this spaceship with, with the keenest anticipation. anticipation. Thank, Thank you. From the Space Institute, fixing position and probable time of approach of the space vehicle, bringing for the first time in our world's known history to our planet aliens who are our first visitors from a distant galaxy. Meanwhile, at 5.18 this morning, the California Satellite Observatory reported that an unknown object has crossed the orbit of the moon and is rapidly approaching Earth. Scientists unanimously agree that this is not the expected space vehicle itself, but is a mechanical device sent ahead by them for reasons unknown at the present time. report ready? They have sent us a video log that contains a photographic record of the alien ship's entire flight. You ready? Yes, doctor. It's in perfect working order. All right, let's see it.
remarkable. Crash landing on Mars. And this is their SOS. We are obviously in touch with beings who have a very highly evolved technology. You think their ship was destroyed, Doctor? No, I don't. I think there's an excellent chance that there may be survivors. But we haven't received any more signals now for three days. Well, that may mean merely damaged equipment. What I'm interested in is the possibility that these extraordinary creatures who have sent us this video log of their disaster may, at this instant, be waiting for us to rescue them. Dr. But Dr. Faraday, Faraday, we... Attention, Dr. Faraday, please report to your office immediately. They can't wait to hear what it's about. I intend to schedule a, a press conference for 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. The world wants to know what has happened, and I shall tell them. But the real question remains to be answered. What are we going to do about it? And so it appears that these beings from another world have called for our help. <coughs> The situation, the situation it may, may not, not be exactly, exactly as we, as we would, would have wished, wished. but now, now that the, the doors, doors have realistically, realistically opened, opened to close, close the, gap the gap between the worlds, worlds, I feel that we are obliged to make every effort to give them our help. help. It is true, of course, that we are fully prepared to embark for Mars. The spaceship, Oceano, the spaceship Oceano, Oceano, has, been has been designated to attempt the first flight to Mars six months from now. I'm going to urge the heads of state of all countries to, to cooperate, cooperate in, in this endeavor. endeavor. Time to go to Mars is now, and not, not six, six months, months from now. now. And to do so, we, we must, must get, get those, those supplies, supplies to the moon. moon. Rocket RT-12, please report to the central operator. You have a call from Earth. I'm sorry, Doctor. We don't seem to be able to pick up a thing. Their equipment must have been destroyed in the crash. Dr. Faraday, may I speak to you for a moment, please? Yes, of course. Since there are no more signals coming through, I'm afraid we'll have to proceed in the dark, as it were. Doctor, I, I just received my orders. Oh, good. Yes, yes. Are you, are you pleased? Of course. But I was hoping that Alan Brenner would be on my flight, and I was wondering... I'm sorry, Lord. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about it. The balance of personnel for this key flight has been most carefully worked over. We shall undoubtedly send Brenner on the Oceano, too. I see. It's a great honor that's been bestowed on you, Laura, and I don't mind telling you now that I was one of those who recommended you. I appreciate that. Dr. Faraday, Dr. Faraday, please report to the Astrophysical Laboratory immediately. Well, Laura, marvelous adventure lies ahead of you. I envy you. Good luck. Thank you.
I just heard the news. And I was just trying to get up enough courage to tell you. Well, we sort of figured it might happen this way. I know. Well, look, I'm sure I'm going to be on the next ship. I'll make a date right now to see you there. In fact, I'll tell you what. I'll take you dancing on Mars. How about that? Attention. Astronaut Laura James. Laura James, please report to the Central Conference Room for a press and television interview. Hey, you're going to be the most famous girl in America. Now go on, tell them who you are and where you came from. Seven seconds and counting. Vernier start. Report the ready position. Two over zero minus X ray one two. All systems green. Delta minus one eight seconds to start. Ready light is on. Count down start. Count. Dr. Faraday speaking. Commander Brockman reporting, sir. How are you doing? Everything according to plan, sir. Astronaut James blacked out during acceleration, but is now revived. All instrument readings, normal. Spending, Commander. Just keep going. Yes, sir. We intend to, sir. Accounting for the DH factor of drift, we progress 75 million miles toward Mars and are passing through perihelion to the sun. Mars is giving off a red coloring and is becoming more vivid as we approach. It suggests that there is a really deep oxidation of the planet's major substance. How does that sound for the ship's logs, sir? Very good. Accurate and uh, rather imaginative. Thank you, sir. Maybe when we get back to Earth, you can have that published. And you'll be known as that famous writer astronaut fellow. Well, I never thought of it that way. Oh, it's dinner time. Uh, Commander, aren't you going to eat dinner? No, I'm not very hungry. How about you? You very hungry? I'm starved. Well, good. So am I. Let's go eat. Hey, who wants to see some party magic, huh? 
Oh, what do you mean, yo? You seen this one? Oh, well, I really don't know a lot about what to do at a party. I mean, we could, uh, I don't know, I guess. Hey, let's watch a film a little about what to do. What makes a good party? Let's watch that. That's what we do. Have a good time. I just had a letter from my brother, and guess what? I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever gonna happen. I don't think so. many details to be planned, but the basic things are settled. Guest list, invitations, refreshments, entertainment. All these things should be planned to fit together well. It's the big night. The planning and preparation will help make a good party. But what else makes a good party? It's the skill of the hosts and the skill of the guests in making the party fun for everyone. Here we are, gang. Step right in. Hi, hi. Oh, 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 I'm so glad you came. Finally me. Wonderful. First, getting everyone acquainted and into the spirit of the party. How's it done? Come in here, Steve. We'll wait here for the girls to put their coats away. Okay, Jean. Well, Steve, what do you think of our game? What you've met of them, I mean. Oh, they're swell. 
But what's this about me being uh, the guest of honor? Oh, that's Jean's way of keeping you quiet. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Margie and Dottie were just thrilled to think you college men would call for them. Oh, a couple of campus bigwigs we are. <laughs> you bet your life. <laughs> oh, I think our guests are arriving. Excuse me. I hope you like our friend Steve. Well, I hope they'll like me. <laughs> they will. Hi, how are you? Oh, hello, Eileen. Good to see you. Hi. Hello. Hi. Are we the first ones here? Oh, no. Margie oh. and Dottie are here. Oh. Hi, Jean. How have you been? Hello, Paul. I'm so glad you could come. Well, you can't keep me away. <laughs> Eileen, this is Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, Eileen. Aren't you the uh, party planner I've heard so much about? <laughs> well, and this is Paul Johnson, our star tackle. How are you doing, Steve? Glad to know you, Paul. Let me take your coat. Notice Paul. how oh, Jean helps five. her guests get acquainted. I'll go with you. Oh, no, never Well, the never party is off to a good start. Guests are on time. Everyone's out to have fun and to help others fun. And when all the guests have arrived and have been introduced, the games begin. Well-planned, well-chosen games. First, a simple get-together game. Each one may ask questions and try to guess his own identity. This mixes the group well, and besides, it provides a means of choosing partners for the next game. Having fun together makes a party. This means both hosts and guests. Whenever any of the guests begin to lose interest in a game, the host should start a new game, so fun together can continue. And, of course, the guests have a part in this, too. Each one should try to make the games fun. Each should take part in what the group is doing. And if some guests forget this, well, anyone, even another guest, can help get the entire group together again. Oh, Nora, right. Jim started that hat making contest right. that you like so much. Come on. Take it. Take a hat for her. And in the end, we're going to give the prize to the best hat. All right, now here are your materials. A hat making contest? Well, this will reveal some talent. The party is going well again. Have you noticed some of the skills of the guests that help keep the party fun for all? Let's look for others. And did you ever play rhythm? One, four. I can see you guys three again. One, three. Three, two. Two, seven. Six, seven, three. two. Or how about charades? And then, at just the right moment, is anybody hungry? Everything's ready. Oh, yeah. Is anybody hungry? Well, a little snack certainly is pleasant about this time of evening. Simple food, buffet style, an informal way to serve refreshments. Each one can serve himself and help the others, too. And while everyone finishes eating, a little more spontaneous, unplanned fun. ready for fun. Take part in the party. Help everyone around you to have a good time. Leave on time and courteously too, thanking your host sincerely for the good time you've had. All these things help to make a good party, a party that's fun for all. Something's happened to the instruments controlled by the I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever gonna happen. I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever gonna happen. I don't think so. 
no, 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 no. Maybe someday you'll have it your way. Maybe someday it'll all work out. Three in group seven. Under maximum protection. All controls are working. Use all power available. Yes, sir. Sunburst severely damaged exterior instruments. Using emergency instruments only. Very difficult. Laura, Laura, come in, Luciano. It's not translating. <laughs> Oxygenator tablets, quick! Paul, take these. Here, they'll make you feel better. Symphony, my ears ain't broad. It will go soon. Are you feeling better? Oh, I guess our emergency equipment worked okay, huh? We're in orbit now. We've got to locate the ship. Now, Paul, you do the observing. Laura, turn off the ultraviolet protection shield. And oh, contact Luna 7. Let them know we came through safely. I'm going to check the fuel supply. I'm very much concerned about the Oceano's fuel supply. That accident forced them to use more than they could spare. You mean they may have trouble landing? No, but it'll be touch and go on the return trip. We must get the Oceano 2 launched sooner. Lunar 7, calling Lunar 7. This is Oceano. Oceano, calling Lunar 7. We read you, Oceano. Over. Laura, this is Faraday speaking. We have good news. We've located the interstellar vehicle. It is in section 18, unit 5. Got it. We are now entering orbit position to land. We will transmit again from Mars. Well, gentlemen, our mystery should be solved very soon.
even land on Mars, much less return to Earth. We don't intend to land on Mars. What? Look, Dr. Faraday, let me show you what we mean. All right. After we put the satellites into orbit, we can land on one of the moons of Mars, Phobos. We'll have plenty of fuel for this because the gravity here is so slight. Then from Phobos, we can get to Mars in our rescue ship. Clever. Logical. Possible, but it's too great a risk. The slightest miscalculation would mean complete disaster. Every space flight is risky, Dr. Faraday. No, really, Doctor, this is too important. We have our calculations carefully worked out. I know we can do it. You're either fools or very brave men. I'll see what can be arranged. Meteor. Hello, Oceano. We have arrived in orbit. Congratulations, Tony. Uh, let me speak to your co-pilot. There's someone here who wants to say hello. Alan can't speak now. He's releasing the observation satellites. Let's talk again at, uh, 2230 hours. All right. Paul, Laura, come here. You can see the satellite. Look. Now we'll find him. We'll find him for sure. You better radio the Oceano. I think somebody wants to say hello to you. Calling Laura James. Calling Laura James. Come in, Laura James. That is not the correct contact signal, Astronaut Brenner. It seems to be the correct signal for me, Astronaut James. Alan, where are you? We've landed on Phobos. This is Brockman. How is it there? Well, okay, I guess. We'll inspect it in a moment. That wouldn't be advisable, Alan. We've calculated your timing for landing. You must leave within 32 minutes. If you don't leave now, you'll have to stay a whole week. Okay, we'll be there within two hours. And remember, we're expecting a very warm welcome. You'll get it. The Martian girls are dying to meet you. You'd better hurry. A strong wind is coming up here. You now have 29 minutes left. Thank you, astronaut James. We'll see you soon. Alan, come here. Who's that? I don't know. But I think we'd better find out.
have only 17 minutes. 17 minutes. Answer, please. This is Meteor. We have amazing news for you. It turns out they landed on Phobos. I don't... Who's they? The astronauts from the other planet. The rescue ship landed here and one of them is alive. We're gonna bring her with us. But your rescue ship can only carry two people. I know. Do you have any suggestions? Hey, what? This is something we've got to decide between ourselves, Tony. You heard Laura. 17 minutes. 16 now. Well, I know, but... We've got no choice, Tony. The rescue ship can't possibly carry more than two. And this... this being is the whole reason we came here. Okay, I'll stay. There's a decent chance that Oceana 2 will get here in time. No. So you go ahead and take her. No, that wouldn't be fair. Look, we don't have time to argue. If we miss the start, all three of us might die. Okay. Let's flip for it. All right, if it'll make you feel better. I haven't got any coins. All I have is paper moon money. My old American good luck piece. Call it. Ed. Meteor. Meteor, answer, please. Alan, I want to talk to you. It's no use. They had a decision to make, and I'm sure they've made it by now. Put up the radio beacon. Whoever is piloting that ship, they'll need all the help you can get in this storm. I don't think they'll have any real difficulty in finding him. Even off foot, he must be following the beacon in this storm. No. Don't worry about him, we're gonna find him.
That's right. That's our visitor from another planet. Strange. She seems so human, yet obviously not human at all. I know. It's uncanny. It's like what would happen to us if we'd been in another atmosphere. Does she seem to be all right? Anders just took her pulse. He said that it's beating much stronger than a human's if they were unconscious. So. Mm -hmm. Paul. What? Who brought her? Alan. Oh, I was so afraid you were going to stay. Are you sure, Commander, that there's not going to be enough fuel? I'm sorry, Alan, there isn't. Enough for what? I wanted to pick up Tony. Laura. Contact Luna Servant. I want to talk to Dr. Faraday about this. Yes, sir. The female astronaut is with us, Doctor. She's still unconscious, but seems to be in a good condition. We're very thrilled by your success. Congratulations. Then you'll blast off immediately. Yes, Doctor. But we're very concerned about astronaut Barata. He's marooned on Phobos, and we don't have enough fuel to pick him up. What's the status of Oceano 2? Oceano 2 will be ready to blast off this week. It seems to me that if Barada uses his emergency ration sparingly, he ought to be able to hold out very well. Thank you, Doctor. We'll convey that message to him. Godspeed, my friends. We'll see you soon, Doctor. Get me the meteor. Hello, meteor. This is Command Ship Oceano calling. Hello, media. This is Command Ship Oceano calling. Answer, please. Tony, this is Alan. Listen, Tony, we have good news for you. Are you listening? Please answer. Media calling spaceship media. This is Command Ship Oceano calling. Well, why doesn't he answer? Are you sure you're sending properly, Lawrence? Yes, Alan. He's sending properly. We'll just have to keep trying until we get him. Hello, media. This is Command Ship Oceano. Answer, please. Tony, are you there? I have important news for you. This is Meteor. Do you hear me? Tony, we do hear you. Why haven't you answered? I went outside to collect some soil samples. I'm going to set up a little lab here. Keep myself busy for a while. <laughs> well, that's great, Tony. Because, listen, we have good news for you. Oceano 2 blasts off in a week. And Dr. Faraday says he can get to you. Just, just don't eat too much. Thanks, I won't. You're going to be okay, Tony. Yeah. You have a good trip back, you hear? Take good care of your passenger. Yeah, we will. Listen, Tony, we're going to have to blast off right now. So, over and out. Over and out. Commander, she's coming around. It's time we got started. Alan, prepare the navigational chart. Yes, Commander. All right. Begin to time your check now. Yes, Commander. Four.
Yes, sir. <clears throat> I want you to make a thorough check of the electrical system and gravity simulator. Be sure we didn't miss any of the damage that was caused by the sunburst. Yes, sir. And don't fall. I think you had a logical choice to take care of our passenger. I uh, thought of suggesting it to uh, Laura. But it seems our visitor doesn't get along very well with her own sex. Yes, sir. Well, I'll, I'll do my best, Commander. You count on me, sir. I'm sure you will. Thirsty, you suck water up like this. Now you try it. Go ahead. It's all right. Look, like this. Go ahead. That's very good. Now, how about the eating department? Let's try that, huh? Not that it tastes so great, but it's so good for you. <laughs> Where are you trying? Look, like this. Hmm. Yeah, I'll try huh. Hey, we're gonna have a little trouble in the eating department, sir. How's she responding to the ship's atmosphere? Is it giving her any trouble? No, she seems to be responding fine, sir. She is only accustomed to some sort of liquid nourishment. You realize, Paul, that her life pattern may be very different from her own. Mm-hmm. Look at her skin, for instance. It appears to have a high chlorophyll content. She may, in certain respects, be more akin to plant life than animal life as we know it. She may even take in some nourishment from the atmosphere through her skin. Hmm. I keep wondering what she's thinking. Well, Paul, the answers to all these questions science will give us when we bring her back to Earth where they can do adequate tests. In the meantime, though, there is something I can do that may tell us more. What's that, sir? I want to study a sample of her blood under the microscope. Mm. Laura, syringe ready? Take her arm, Paul. Yes, sir. I'll get another hypo, Commander. No, no, Laura, wait. This is more than some childish fear of the needle. Perhaps she has an extremely low pain threshold. Perhaps. Perhaps what, sir? I don't know. She mustn't do anything that may affect her health adversely. She's probably the most valuable specimen for scientific research in the history of our planet. To get her back to Earth safely has to be our first consideration. Paul, it's your turn to watch the controls, isn't it? Yes, Commander, it is. We'll uh, discuss her puzzling behavior later on again. You know, it might be a good idea to put us some food for her. Perhaps if she gets very hungry, she'll give it a try. I have some right here, sir. Oh. I have to go mind the controls of this old ship now. I'm leaving you uh, some food here in case you get hungry. Some water. You ought to try to get some sleep. You know, sleep? Hmm? All right? See? Hmm? Okay. I 
I've spent more time with her than the others. And I think that I've noticed something about her that the others haven't noticed yet. She has... Come on, get a smiley. <laughs> We're having some fun now, huh? Ooh, get the roof. <laughs> oh, hey, in fact. You know, um, teasing <clears throat> skeletons with fruit is not the only thing you can do for fun in your party. You, you can uh, play pin the tail on the monkey, uh, maybe even get a pinata. And if you don't, if you don't know, if you can't go to a fancy store and get a pinata, like you don't have a pinata store, like so many people do, you can always make your own pinata. What you do is you get a, you get like a bowl, put water and flour in there, and then you get a, some newspaper. I don't know where you're gonna get this paper these days, but now you know, believe you, you put all that in there, you you slap it on a balloon, you beat it with a stick till somehow magically candy comes up. That's what I've been told by TV anyway. And I was watching another movie because you know it's fine topping, huh? I like the I like the dance music we got. That uh playing with doing. We'll have to finish the game tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow? I'm going to Mary's party tomorrow, aren't you? A party? Why, I didn't even... No, I don't like parties. I never have any fun at parties. I was kind of hoping you'd go. Parties are more fun when all your friends are there. Cindy! Well, I better go. I'll see you. Here's your ball. Mother, why do you suppose Mary didn't invite me to her party? Are you sure you didn't get an invitation? Maybe they thought I wouldn't want to go to a party. They probably thought I wouldn't know how to act. Hey, now, your name's Cindy, not Cinderella. You will get an invitation to the party. There's just been some mix-up. Wait and see. Oh, it's not important anyhow. Good night, Mother. Good night, Cindy. Cindy, not Cinderella. You go to the party. You go to the party. Cindy. Cindy. Wake up, Cindy. What? Who's there? I don't see anybody. Of course you didn't. I'm not just anybody. I'm your fairy godmother. Sure. You don't believe me? Well, that's up to you. 
I just thought you might want to go to that party. Oh, I do, I do. We've got some work to do. We've got to get you ready. Oh, but I wasn't invited to the party. They probably thought I'd rather play basketball or go fishing or... Well, you've been invited, all right. I've seen to that. And I'm going with you. But you mustn't tell anyone. Not even Dennis? Well, maybe we'd better tell Dennis. I have a feeling he's going to need my help, too. But hurry up or you'll be late. But the party isn't until this afternoon. It is this afternoon. Now hurry up, out of bed. Oh, what a mess. Oh, well, that's why I have the magic wand. Ready? Oh, but this isn't my very best dress. Oh, now look. You're not going to the party to show off your clothes. But you should be clean and neat when you go to the party. Oh, we better hurry now. We don't want to be late. Ready? Here we go to Mary's. Here we are. Oh, I hope everyone is already here. I'd hate to be the first one. I don't blame you. No one likes to sit and wait for a party to start. And a party can't really get going until everyone arrives. So whenever you go to a party, Cindy, always be on time. And when the clock says it's time to go home, be sure to leave on time. That's important. Will my clothes turn like Cinderella? Oh, no. But you can spoil the fun of a party if you try to make it last too long so that everyone gets tired and bored. Come on, Janet. <laughs> oh, look. Here comes some of the others now. We're all getting here at the same time. We're, where'd you go? Hi, Cindy. Who are you talking to? Oh, no, and I was just thinking out loud, I guess. Hi, Janet. Hi, Hi Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Cindy and Bill, so glad you could come. We're going to live here. Cindy. Well, hi, Dennis. I thought you weren't coming to the party. I wasn't, but you'll see her, then you'll understand. See her? See who? See me. What? She's going to help us enjoy the party. You are? Certainly. See, they're setting up for a game of musical chairs. Oh, but I don't like the... There. That's the way to have fun at a party. Join in the game. A party calls for teamwork. Why, nobody will have any fun unless everyone joins in. So join in wholeheartedly in any game suggested. And you'll all have a lot more fun. Everybody get up. Oops, remember now. Don't be too noisy or rough. And don't break things. Gee, thanks. Yeah, and you lost your chair, too. You're out of the game. That's what you get for bumping into things. Oh, she's only kidding. I know, but don't tease or make fun of others. Not even your very best friends. They might not understand. Why, if they thought you were serious, their feelings would be hurt. And then neither of you would have any fun. Now, would you? All right, fairy godmother. Uh-oh, the music's starting. What do I do? Why, just what you have been doing. Obey the rules of the game and... Be a good loser. <laughs> Bye now. Stand up. Come on, Cindy. Come on. Come on, Cindy. Come on, Cindy. Come on, Come on, Cindy. Come on, Come on, Cindy. Come on, Cindy. Come on, Cindy. Come on, Come on, Cindy. 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 Come See how much fun it is when you join in the games in the right ways? I just hope I can remember the right ways you've shown us. That's easy. Just remember your manners. Be polite. And above all, be considerate of others. So have fun together. Come on, you guys. You've got another game. Have okay. fun. Come on, let's go. Come on, over here. Let's go.
Here, Cindy. Here, Dana. Thanks, Thank Mary. Mary. Oh, Where? Here I am. Wait a minute. Don't write anything. I bet I know what you were going to tell us. Remember our table manners when eating. Oh, now you spoiled my fun. I wanted to write it for you. Now you won't think I've been any help to you. Oh, you've been a big help, Fairy Godmother. I've enjoyed the party, so go ahead and write it for us if you want to. Sure, we want you to write it for us. You do? May I? Remember your table manner. You didn't really need my help. You knew it already. I guess you don't need me anymore. I may as well be going. Oh, no. Oh, yes. You can't see or hear fairies unless you need them. And you don't need me anymore. But you will remember to leave on time, won't you? And you'll remember to thank the hostess. And whenever we go to any more parties, we'll remember to be clean and neat and to be on time. And we'll be considerate of others, too. We'll join in the games. And to obey the rules. And make fun for everybody, not fun of anybody. Or be too noisy or too rough. And we'll remember our table manners when eating. You'll always have fun then. Because parties are fun when everyone is considerate of others. Goodbye now. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Cindy. Don't go. Wake up, Cindy. Oh, Mother, I just dreamed that... <gasps> Cindy, here's Mary's sister, Nancy. She just came by to tell you that she was supposed to deliver your invitation to Mary's party three days ago. But she forgot. Wasn't it nice of her to come by so early this morning to tell you about it? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Check all passengers. See if she is all right. Could he have had a heart attack? He seemed perfectly well last night. He was perfectly well. Look. Feeds at least. She's a monster. You notice how deep and heavy her breathing is? She's gorged herself of fresh blood. And now she's digesting like a boa constrictor that has swallowed a whole animal. She may remain like this for days. It's fascinating. Horrible. We ought to destroy her right now. No, no, Alan, she's much too precious for that. Besides, how can we expect her to conform to our ideas of proper behavior? She's not necessarily aware that she has done wrong. Wrong from our point of view, that is. But she's much more than just an animal. She comes from a highly evolved planet. Technologically evolved, yes. But what about their social structure? Moral concepts, as we recognize them, may be non-existent in their society. They may be some sort of intellectual insect. Which feeds on human beings. Not ordinarily, no. They probably feed on the blood of some lower form of animal life on that planet, as we do on ours. No, not on blood. Oh, Alan, is there such a difference between blood and a rare beefsteak? All right, but what do we do? Take turns playing dinner for her? I don't think that'll be necessary. We have a good supply of blood plasma with us. We'll use that to feed her. We found astronaut Paul Grant dead at zero. 
zero zero hours this morning. Cause of death has been determined as loss of blood. How did it happen? I hope this won't sound too fantastic, Doctor. It's not very pleasant. The, the creature from the other planet, she fed on Paul, on his blood. How are you proceeding? The passenger is sleeping now, digesting. Apparently, she only feeds at intervals. We intend to give her blood plasma in the future. I see. You understand how important it is to keep her well and to bring her back with you safely? Commander Brockman has made this clear, Doctor. You will follow emergency plan 82 for the disposal of astronaut Grant's body. Yes, sir. That is our intention. Very well. A contact again in 24 hours. We will, Dr. Faraday. One should not be shocked by anything we find out there. Gentlemen, the particular nature of our visitor from space for the moment does not go beyond this room. No, sir. Bradley? Yes, sir. Notify next to kin with Paul Grant's death. This death in line of duty, cause or causes unknown. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. For ye must know that God will redeem thy soul from the power of the grave. For he shall receive you. Amen. of outer space. It's a fitting grave for an astronaut. Laura, will you check the automatic pilot for me? Alan, I, uh, I need some exercise. Well, don't you think... Don't you think we ought to keep that, that thing tied up or something? I mean, when she wakes again, she's going to be dangerous. She'll only be dangerous when she's hungry. Or if you're all asleep. So, we'll keep her fed. And one of us is going to stay awake at all times. You know, there's one thing that really bothers me. What's that? There wasn't any sign of a struggle. She must have attacked him in his sleep. What, do you mean that he wouldn't have felt it and wakened up? Not necessarily. People are often unaware of being attacked by a vampire bat while they're sleeping. Perhaps nature has given her a protective saliva that deadens the pain of the victim. Then afterwards, because of the lack of blood, consciousness never returns. No, no, Albert, I don't think it is a mystery that there was no sign of a struggle. like this. They must have felt something similar to a fellow astronaut on her ship. Go ahead, try it. It's better than water. There, you
You see, she'll be well fed, we'll be safe, and we'll bring a healthy specimen home with us. And if we run out of plasma, Commander? Well, in that case, uh, we may have to take turns in uh, contributing to her well-being. Oh, I know it sounds ghoulish, but is it really so different from having a patient aboard who needs frequent transfusions? She has been eating the plasma regularly and appears to be in good health. However, yesterday we ran out of supply and from now on it will be necessary. Wake up this time, you won't be able to move. Look at it. Gorge with human blood. Digesting. Makes me sick even to look at her. I can't understand how Anders could have fallen asleep when he knew that she... Didn't fall asleep. I'm convinced of that now. And I don't think Paul did either. She does something. I don't know what. A kind of hypnosis. Some strange mental power that, that we don't have. I sensed it from the beginning. And it's deadly. Alan, I'm really afraid now for the first time. Well, don't be. We're going to get back to Earth, all right. And we're going to take our monster visitor with us. I only hope they know what to do with her. You are close enough now to retain Commander Brockman's body on board with you. Now, after you land, it might be instructive to perform an autopsy. Yes, Dr. Faraday. I trust you're taking the utmost precautions from now on. Absolutely, sir. Now, <clears throat> your best landing location will be the Earth. You're going to orbit for 24 hours and then receive final instructions. After today, change your radio contact to the Space Institute frequency. I shall be leaving for Earth almost immediately. Is that clear? Yes, Dr. Faraday. We'll see you very soon. Good luck. I don't need it. He was going very badly on that ship, very badly indeed.
she... She got to me, didn't she? Yes. What happened? I woke up. Found her. Pulled her off of you. We fought. And she just... She just ran away. I don't think I really hurt her. Where is she? Now, I better go look. Please don't. No, I'm all right now. Really, I'm all right. What's happened to her? No, don't come any closer, Laura. She's dead. Now I know why she wouldn't let us take that blood sample. Why? She's bled to death. All you did was scratch her and she's bled to death. She's a hemophiliac. Perhaps she was some sort of royalty where she came from. Queen, maybe. I thought we weren't going to have enough fuel. We might get our sun goggles. If we haven't seen sunlight for so long, we might be blinded by it. But it'll sure feel good. What is it? It's... it's some kind of egg. Egg? they sent her. She wasn't just an ambassador. She was a queen. A queen bee. Maybe this is how their society is set up. A queen who does all the breeding. Or maybe their planet was dying and they just sent her to bring her kind to Earth. Laura, we have to destroy it. But Alan... But don't you realize what they were trying to do? They, they sent her to Earth to find a new feeding ground for her race. To them, we're just animals to be eaten. We can't let these creatures breed on Earth. Alan, that's not for us to decide. Scientists from all over the world have been waiting for us to bring back something living. and They'll keep them under control. Too late. Just as I thought, she has them hidden all over the ship. They'll have to tear their ship apart piece by piece and fumigate it. Where are they? Alive and growing, you say? Extraordinary. I don't think you realize, Doctor. 
They should be destroyed immediately. Come, come, my boy. You've just returned from an amazing but a very tiring trip. We may destroy them and we may not, but at least we must see what we have. Isn't that right, Laura? I, I think so, Doctor. You brought back something unique and marvelous from another world. You can be very proud of it. But, Doctor, they're deadly. I appreciate your warning, my boy. We shall take every precaution. Help me, will you, gentlemen? We have some very precious samples to remove from this ship. Well, I tried. You're scientists, Alan. They know what they're doing. I hope so. Come on. Let's touch Earth and feel sunshine on our faces again. Well, we all had a great time at uh, Smiley's big death anniversary party. He won't, still won't tell me how dead he is. So, well, you know, we'll be here next year again for another big death anniversary time for him and all of us. So, hope you enjoyed the movie, and we'll see you soon. Happy death anniversary! Surprise! <laughs> oh my God! I've been eating that. Uh, 